COVID-19 patients. And what we are going to do is we are going to set up our understanding of this topic before we can actually look at what is going on inside the patient. We'll look at some of that today as well. But important thing is to be able to understand the ACE1, ACE2, angiotensin receptor blocker or ARBs ACE inhibitors plus the renin angiotensin system because these are the primary player in this problem. So let us start that discussion. What we are going to do is, let me just quickly set up my, okay. <laughs> Welcome guys, let's start. So the eventual thing that we have to understand, and even in today's discussion, at the end of the discussion, you should have a pretty good idea of why the hypercoagulable state occurs. Although we would do one more session tomorrow and we would discuss a little more in terms of the clotting factors and how do they participate in this whole uh, issue. So let us start. I'm going to share some studies, plus I'm going to share my screen to discuss this uh, mechanism. I'm seeing a lots of uh, videos as well on uh, YouTube which kind of just brush on the mechanism and do not really provide enough knowledge that you can make as medical professionals, make an informed and thoughtful decision to handle your patient. So today we are going to go into the detail and understand various mechanisms so you can take care of them. So the first thing we are going to go over is what is ACE, what are uh, angiotensins, what is ACE1 enzyme? What is ACE2 enzyme, which is the uh, receptor for the coronavirus as well? Then what kind of receptors these the substrate of these enzymes work on? So I have been hearing a lot of uh, students are confused about that. And so I wanted to make sure that first we look at them and then we look at the hypercoagulability. The reason for looking at them, uh, these two things are the ACE and ACE2 uh, that they are the players in hypercoagulability. So if we don't understand them, we're not going to understand the hypercoagulability as well. So let's start. I'm going to share my screen. Um, hello, Vasaras, Dr. Alexandros. You have uh, that uh, soluble ACE2 receptor uh, idea that you have floated. That is a beautiful idea. And there are many companies, I think, that, that are working on it. And there are other people working on it. But I really, really love it that you came up with that idea as well. Good morning, everyone. So let's start. Today's discussion is very important. So please do me a favor. Do share it with others as well, because this may actually be able to save some people's lives. Uh, there are, there are me mechanisms that we would discuss that can, if a doctor knows them or a, a nurse or NP or a healthcare professional knows them, they may be able to make some better decisions for their patients. So please make sure that you share this. You uh, also make sure that please you take care of the um, information here as well. So I'm going to start with a very simple, forget about this diagram here for the time being. I'm going to start with a very simple idea of what is the Renin Angiotensin System or RAS and how is the ACE1 and ACE2 act in it and what are their roles? At the end of this part of the topic, you should know what is ACE1, you should know what is ACE2, you should know what is angiotensin 2 and its function, and you should know what is angiotensin 1 to 7 and that function and how they are opposing to each other and where are these uh, things found, these molecules and receptors and enzymes, where are they found? So let's start. I'm gonna make a kidney here. So this is a kidney and then I will make a liver. So let's say here we have a liver. I will make a heart. So let's say this is a heart. So these are just di diagrams or schematics of these things. Then I'll make a couple of lungs here and that's it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect these guys through the blood system or the vascular system.
So this, the red lines here, are the vascular system. These are the simplified scheme of a closed cardiovascular system with the blood vessels. So the first concept is that we know when there is reduced blood pressure, when there is reduced blood pressure, that causes kidneys to release renin, correct? So let's look at renin here. Let's say renin is like a scissors, a pair of scissors. So that is renin. So as soon as there is low blood pressure, kidneys create renin from pro-renin. And this renin enzyme is circulating in the blood circulation. Now keep this one concept in your mind. The second concept is that the liver makes a protein called angiotensinogen. Tensinogen. So let's say here is a protein. I'm going to make this one in red. And that protein looks like this. Let's say this is the angiotensinogen protein, which is made by liver and released in the blood. Good. So this is a second concept to keep in mind. Renin coming from the kidney and angiotensinogen coming from the liver. And please realize that all of this is going to move towards hypercoagulability state. So please keep these concepts in mind. Now what happens is when angiotensinogen is present, the renin acts on it. So if I make renin here, and I make angiotensinogen here, what renin does, the scissors, what it does is it cuts angiotensinogen and creates a smaller or another molecule. It modifies this and creates another molecule that is called angiotensin 1. Correct? So this is angiotensin 1. Sorry, I shouldn't put the circle on it. So this is angiotensin 1. This is the third concept to keep in mind. Renin came in from the kidneys. They it acted on the angiotensinogen that is produced by the liver. That action here, this action created. <laughs> so these scissors look really funny. So let's fix them a little bit. So that action created a molecule called angiotensin 1, which is circulating in the blood. This angiotensin 1, so now please pay attention here because students have been sending me notes and comments separately that, hey, what is the ACE and what are the ACE2 and what are the receptors for these things? And I want to clarify this. So we have angiotensin 1. Now let's come here. Let's say this is the a blood vessel in the lungs. These angiotensin converting enzymes that I'm going to talk about, ACE and ACE2, and remember the importance of the ACE2 is that the coronavirus uses that enzyme to enter into the cells. So these enzymes are present almost everywhere in the body, but their abundance is more in lungs, heart, intestine, kidney, some in brain as well, and then some on the other uh, tissues to or other cells as well. So I'm going to use lung because that is where they are most abundantly present. So this is a blood vessel in the lung. And here the blood vessels have endothelial cells on them. Endothelial cells are nothing but if I make a blood vessel over here, if this is a blood vessel, the inner, inner layer of cells on a blood vessel, these are sort of egg-like flat cells, we call them squamous cells or flat cells. These cells are called endothelial cells, endothelial cells. 
on the surface of these endothelial cells are the enzymes. So I'm using the word enzyme, ACE and ACE2. ACE, angiotensin converting enzyme, and ACE2 or angiotensin converting enzyme 2. This ACE2 is the one that is the uh, target for coronavirus. So back here, let's say we have angiotensin converting enzyme here. Or this is the ACE enzyme, ACE. Now this angiotensin 1, this molecule, when that molecule comes and attaches to the ACE, so let's say this is the angiotensin 1, and I'm going to now this time just abbreviate that these as ANG1, ANG2, and so on. So read ANG as angiotensin, so I don't have to write it again and again. So we have ACE enzyme present in the blood vessels of the lung. Then we have angiotensin 1 that comes in contact with this. And the enzyme, which is on the surface of the endothelial cells, it is sticking there. The enzyme is going to convert the angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2. And I'm going to make angiotensin 2 as a rounded product here. So I hope that so far this is clear. What is going on if I go out, zoom out a little bit? What's going on is when the blood pressure is low, we have renin released from the kidney. Renin acts on angiotensinogen that is produced by liver and converts the angiotensinogen into angiotensin 1. When that angiotensin 1 goes to lungs, inside the lungs, there is a receptor called ACE or angiotensin converting enzyme that converts angiotensin 1 into angiotensin 2. So that is the, um, that is the basic mechanism. Now let's look at what angiotensin 2 does, which is interesting for us from COVID-19 point, point of view not from other uh, aspects, but from COVID-19. So now what happens is, look, angiotensin 2, if I make, let's say this is a blood vessel, and here is the blood vessels have muscle cells around them. Remember that blood vessels, if I go out here to this blood vessel, blood vessels have muscle cells in their walls, that allow these muscle cells, these muscle cells will contract or relax to make the blood vessel dilated or constricted to increase or reduce the blood pressure. So what happens is when the lumen, lumen means the inner space, this is the lumen, when the lumen of a blood vessel narrows because the muscles around this have constricted, that causes increase in blood pressure because the diameter of the blood, blood vessel has reduced. Similarly, when the diameter of the blood, blood vessel increases or when the blood vessel dilates, the blood pressure drops. So back here, angiotensin 2 actually works. So now here is the first concept that students were asking that hey, we are getting confused. There is a receptor called AT1, angiotensin 1 receptor. There is a receptor called AT1 receptor that is present on the smooth muscles of the blood vessel walls. Angiotensin 2 comes and attaches here with that receptor, AT1 receptor. That causes the smooth muscle, it makes changes in the channels which allows calcium to go into the smooth muscle. Calcium enters into the smooth muscle. That results in contraction of the muscle. So imagine if this muscle is now all around the blood vessel 
or there are multiple muscles that are around the blood vessel and when they get calcium and they contract the lumen of the blood vessel will become narrow and that is vasoconstriction so what is the takeaway in so far of the discussion the takeaway is we have a product called angiotensin 2 the receptor for angiotensin 2 is called AT1. Although there are other receptors too, we have AT2 as well, we have AT3 as well. They are less important for our discussion. AT1 receptors are important. So if somebody asks you, hey, what is the receptor for angiotensin 2? Your answer will be the receptor is AT1. What is angiotensin 2 itself? Angiotensin 2 itself is an enzyme that is expressed in the endothelial lining of the blood vessels most abundantly in the lungs. What is the function of ACE, angiotensin converting enzyme? It picks up angiotensin 1 and converts it into angiotensin 2. So I hope this much is clear. Now let's also look at this diagram I have here. Angiotensin 2 has a very, very important function, which is really important for hypercoagulability. Just this function would actually make it clear like daylight why those patients are becoming hypercoagulable. Look, I'm going to go here for a second and talk about, let's say this is a cell. Cells have for their own function, for example, the immune cells, make reactive oxygen species or ROS, reactive oxygen species. These reactive oxygen species are like dogs or they're like, you know, things that monsters that can bite. So what happens is when there is an oxygen, so let's say here is oxygen and we know that oxygen usually have two empty electrons one empty electron in each shell, what happens is there is, a, there is a molecule NADPH and then there is an enzyme called NADPH oxidase, oxidase or lovingly just called NOx, NOx. This NOx enzyme can take an electron from NADPH and donate it to this oxygen. The result of that is that now this oxygen has only one electron missing and has one extra electron here. That makes it a reactive oxygen species. And this reactive oxygen species is very useful when our immune system cells are using this product to kill the pathogens. It is very reactive. It causes the pathogens to become dead. However, if you make more of it, it would, do, it would do something really bad. What it does is it goes to our cell membranes. It actually can damage a lot of things inside the cell. I'm going to give you one example. It goes to our cell membrane and we know that our cell membranes are made up of phospholipids. And this is also an issue with the hypercoagulability that you would see as we do our second part of this discussion. So let's say there are the phospholipids. Reactive oxygen species can act on the phospholipids and fuse them. This is like welding. You know, you take a high power welder and you weld two things together. So what it does is it takes phospholipids and fuses them with the proteins. So this is protein some protein, whatever protein is there, this is a protein. These are phospholipids. I'm just going to call them PL. The reactive oxygen species can fuse them. It can make a blob out of them and fuse them. That causes damage to our cell membranes. This is why for skin care, we say that, hey, take antioxidants that would take care of the reactive oxygen species and help make the cell membranes better, which in turn result into better skin. But this is generally a good thing for all cells that if they have reactive oxygen species within control, then every cell can function better and is prevented from the harm of the reactive oxygen species. 
So now we have the reactive oxygen species that are produced by NADPH oxidase enzyme. Do you know what angiotensin 2 does? When angiotensin 2, so this is the 81 receptor. This is the 81 receptor. This is angiotensin 2. When angiotensin 2 connects with the, with the receptor, it creates a lot of NOXs. It creates various kinds of NOX enzymes or it activates them, not creates them. And when they are activated, I want to now go back here and explain this diagram. When angiotensin 2 connects with the angiotensin 1 receptor, that causes NOx, which is NADPH oxidase enzyme. It causes the activation of that enzyme, which then, look at this, the end result of enzymatic activation is, number one, reduction in nitric oxide. Nitric oxide is really important for vasodilatation. So when nit nitric oxide is missing or reduced, blood vessels will constrict. So one unwanted effect, although for us in the COVID-19 state unwanted, but, but for angiotensin 2, this is what it does. It causes vasoconstriction. So it is doing its normal function and we use it for maintaining our blood pressure. So normally it is fine. But in case of COVID-19, it can become an issue. So number one, nitric oxide is released, uh, reduced, causing vasoconstriction. Number two, check this out. The enox and the reactive oxygen species and the products that are formed as a result of angiotensin II binding with this receptor, receptor will cause macrophage recruitment. Inflammatory cells will be brought in. So angiotensin II is called to be pro-inflammatory. It causes inflammation. This is what happens in the COVID-19 patients that ACE2 is reduced because COVID-19 virus is using the ACE2 as a boat and ACE, ACE or 81, that system, the angiotensin 2 system will become elaborated, which is pro-inflammatory system. And I am explaining how that happens. Not only this would cause lung injury, but the same mechanisms in the blood vessels would cause blood vessel injury, leading to hypercoagulation. So macrophage recruitment is what? Is one mechanism. Angiogenesis is another me mechanism. We don't care for angiogenesis that much. It takes weeks and months for new blood vessels to form. So ignore that. Regulation of adhesion molecules. This is really important. What it does is, if I go back to this diagram, what it does is on the surface of endothelial cells, remember endothelial cells are egg-like cells that are on the inner um, blood vessel wall. On the surface of these cells, it angiotensin II attachment causes the appearance of cell adhesion molecules, cell adhesion molecules or CAMs. These molecules can now capture running around immune system cells and pull them and stop them and then bring them into the blood vessel wall and into the tissue, which would cause, of course, immune cells are bad cells. They're good cells, but they're bad because wherever they'll go, they'll start fighting. So they're good. But if you unnecessarily stop them, they're going to punch you around as well. So this, this endothelial cell incorrectly stopped them. Why? Because on the 81 receptor of the endothelial cell, we have ACE2 connected. That is the result of the ACE2 connection, that there is increased expression of cell adhesion molecules, which would cause cells, immune cells to become adhesion, even thrombotic cells like platelet and others to start stopping here. So see, when the platelets would start stopping in this area that would cause coagulability that would cause thrombus formation and when the immune system cells are going to be stopped they're going to go in and they're going to start they're going to start causing lots of issues here in the tissue and blood vessel wall that would cause damage to the tissue and damage to the blood vessel wall and when the blood vessel wall itself is damaged 
there is one will brand factor sitting in here or coagulation factor sitting in here what we have done is our body is very clever it has stuffed coagulation factors or al alerts for damage in every tissue whenever the tissue gets damaged these coagulation factors become free and that is an indicator that tissue damage is happening and the thrombosis so let's say with the factor 8 these are i'm going to talk about all of these tomorrow the factor 8 so factor 8 and one will brand factor when they fuse they start causing the formation of thrombus and that is a hypercoagulability state as well so now we are looking at how angiotensin 2 can result in not only damage to the tissue and inflammation there but then if it is a blood vessel then resulting into a thrombus formation which is a hypercoagulable state start so let's go back here to this discussion the cells so now we have adhesion molecules are expressed on the cell surfaces and that would cause the damage as we just discussed then proliferation of the cells the cells that come in contact with these chemical substances that are released because angiotensin 2 became connected to AT1, that would cause the cells to proliferate. That means they would increase in number. This would also cause cells to migrate in that area. That means chemotaxis of the immune system cells to come in there and fight. So every bad thing is happening. We are causing vasoconstriction. That may be fine because we want to maintain our blood pressure, but we are causing lots of inflammatory activities that if not balanced that would that would cause damage and if you see here expression of icam and vcam which is the same thing cell adhesion molecules and um, uh, the the molecules that bring the cells in so the result of this all is what the result is tissue injury blood vessel wall injury and inflammation this is what happens in the lungs as well for the coronavirus so now the question is what is the role of ace2 in this whole situation what what was ace2 doing was it useful and then when we get infection by coronavirus how did we end up in the hypercoagulable state so now let's look at the ace2 uh, uh, matters so far we have done ACE enzyme. We have talked about ACE enzyme and its substrate. Substrate means whatever it works on and creates angiotensin 2. So we've talked about ACE enzyme and angiotensin 2. Three things should be in your mind. ACE enzyme attached to the blood vessel uh, endothelial surfaces. It causes angiotensin 1 to become angiotensin 2. And the receptor for angiotensin 2 is AT1. That is important. Angiotensin 2 is a pro-inflammatory molecule in addition to being vasoconstrictor. Good so far? So now, let's look at ACE2, the coronavirus thing. Look. Look, this is really interesting. ACE2 are also expressed on the now we know all the whole world knows ACE2 are present in our throat area they are present in our respiratory system they are present in our blood vessels they are present in our heart they are present in the intestine they are present in the kidney and the brain and so on so they are present everywhere most abundant areas are intestine and then the heart and then blood vessels, and then lungs, and, and brain, and other, uh, sorry, kidney and intestine are the highest. Okay, back here. Let's take another endothelial cell here. This is one more endothelial cell inside the lungs. And this cell is expressing ACE2. ACE2 is an enzyme. Again, I'm reacting to the comments I've been getting that students have been saying, what is ACE1 and what is ACE2 and what is angiotensin 1, 2 and what is the angiotensin 1 to 7? What are their receptors? So that is what I'm clarifying. So ACE2 is another enzyme that is sitting on the surface of the uh, blood vessels, let's say inside the lungs. And look at what it does. This angiotensin 2, 
would you agree with me that if angiotensin 2 is present in incorrect amounts not only it would cause vasoconstriction but it would cause inflammation that can be dangerous and can reach hypercoagulability states this ACE2 it picks up angiotensin 2 <laughs> this is an enzyme which is so funny it picks up angiotensin 2 and converts it into another molecule i'm going to make that molecule like a box into another molecule it converts it into this molecule this is called angiotensin 1 to 7 that's the name of the molecule angiotensin 1 to 7 so that is called angiotensin 1 to 7 yasmin i understand your uh, question i have seen very few such diagrams but i'll try to find one so now what happens is angiotensin 2 when it comes and connects with ace 2 so here with the ACE2 enzyme, now remember this is the same enzyme that is used by coronavirus to enter the cell. And I'm repeating this again and again because I'm going to connect it to the pathology of hypercoagulability. So keep in mind, look at the current function of the ACE2. ACE2's function is to pick up angiotensin 2 and convert it into angiotensin 1 to 7. Now angiotensin 1 to 7 act on a receptor I'm going to make one more cell here. So let's say this is one more cell. The receptor on it for the angiotensin 1 to 7, this receptor is called mass MAS receptor. The reason for it is called MAS receptor is very interesting. It is created by a gene that is for that was supposed to be a tumor gene. So what happened was there was a patient whose name was Messi. Messi had a tumor and he donated his tumor for scientists to look at the genes in that tumor to understand what genes were functioning to make the tumor. And the scientist found this gene that makes this receptor and they incorrectly felt that that gene was responsible for making the receptor which causes tumor. They called that gene for that patient's name as mass gene from Massey, the patient. Although later on, now we know that this gene and the product of the gene is not very tumorogenic, but it is actually a receptor for angiotensin 1 to 7. So when angiotensin 1 to 7 connects here, angiotensin 1 to 7, when it connects here, it does everything opposite to angiotensin 2. So what does it do? Number one, it causes increased nitric oxide, which causes vasodilatation. So that is one. So remember, angiotensin 2 causes vasoconstriction. This guy causes vasodilatation. More importantly, it reduces inflammation. And that is inflammation. Remember, we talked about it that inside the cell, NADPH oxidase becomes active when angiotensin 2 connects with the cell, and that causes the, uh, uh, the pro-inflammatory activities like cell recruitment and inflammation. Angiotensin 1 to 7 counters that activity. It goes against angiotensin 2. So now, now, look at it. Here is our total diagram. Think about it for a second. If, if the virus comes into our cells or into our body, connects with angiotensin 2 receptors, now I'm calling them receptor, it is angiotensin 2 um, enzyme, which is here. It connects with the, let's say there is one more enzyme. For our study, we make angiotensin enzyme here. Let's say this was the angiotensin enzyme, ACE2 enzyme. Now, this was a very important thing. It was connecting with, it was binding with angiotensin 2 and converting it to 1 to 7, which in turn, angiotensin 1 to 7 is anti-inflammatory. Secondly, when it binds to angiotensin 2 and keeps um, converting it, that reduces the amount of angiotensin 2 in our body, which is a good thing. 
So this ACE2 is a very important molecule or enzyme. But what happens is the silly coronavirus, it comes in and attaches to that receptor. And in that process, when it uses that receptor to go into the cell, it makes that receptor useless as well. So when the ACE2 receptors or ACE2 enzymes, they are the same thing. I call them receptor for the virus, but they are enzymes for angiotensin 2. ACE2 enzymes, when they are less in amount because virus is using them, then the angiotensin 2 has no enzyme to convert it to angiotensin 1 to 7. The result is that number one, there is lack of angiotensin 1 to 7, which is anti-inflammatory, and there is abundance of angiotensin 2, which is pro-inflammatory. That results in blood vessel damage, which results in clotting inside the blood vessel, which is called thrombosis, which is the hypercoagulable state. So can you imagine that the hypercoagulable state is not actually because of something else? Instead, it is because of an imbalance or lack of presence of function of ACE2. And it is a, it is a problem when angiotensin 2 becomes overly active because the thing that would counteract with that which is angiotensin 1 to 7 and ACE2 enzyme, they are not present. Or I shouldn't say they are not present. I should say they are present in a smaller quantity because the virus has wreaked havoc and taken care of them. So does, does this make sense? So the question is, where, where do 82 receptors come in? 82, 82 receptors are not much interesting for us. They are usually present in fetus and newborn children. So maybe the children's protection may have something to do with the 82, but 82 are not uh, functionally very useful in this discussion. So I hope it is now clear. We will tomorrow do another part of this. I want to go over the coagulation cascade and talk about what parts of the cascade become abnormal with COVID-19. So when you are managing the patient, you know that what exactly is the problem. So, okay, so let's talk about the angiotensin receptor blocker here. Look, if there is a ACE inhibitor, it is better than a angiotensin receptor blocker because ACE inhibitor would reduce the formation of angiotensin 2 and reduce the pro-inflammatory action of angiotensin 2. On the other hand, ACE receptor blockers do not stop the formation of angiotensin 2. They just cover the receptor, which is AT1. They cover the AT1 receptor so that angiotensin 2 cannot connect with them. But angiotensin 2 is still present. And if wherever it is going to go, it is going to cause inflammation. So ACE inhibitors are actually better drugs from this point of view compared to ARBs. So I hope that this is uh, interesting. And once again, I want to tie it to the ACE inhibitor and ARB patients who are taking them. Their ACE2 are upregulated. And we discuss this almost daily. That sometimes some people say that upregulated ACE2 are bad because that allow the virus to connect with them and go into the cell. And some people say, some studies say that they are actually good because they do this anti-inflammatory action and they counter the effect of ACE2 and reduce the, the chances of a patient to become serious. So this is where we are at. We are done for the day. This is the discussion. I hope it is clear. Tomorrow we'll talk about the clotting factors and what do we mean by coagulation? What do we mean, mean by thrombosis? What do we mean by thromboembolism? But I hope it is clear to you that for a COVID-19 patient, why this is interesting to see that they have hypercoagulability. It is really an imbalance of angiotensin 2 and angiotensin 1 to 7. And that imbalance is caused by coronavirus connecting with the ACE2 enzyme using that and now ACE2 enzyme is not able to convert angiotensin 2 into angiotensin 1 to 7. 
that's it so uh, i hope it made sense i had been working throughout the day to figure out how to draw these diagrams so that they can be simple and still make sense as well so i hope this is clear do me one favor i say it to you every day please share <laughs> please share so it is funny that every day i say that please share my amount of share keeps going down so if you don't want me if you don't like me to ask you to share then that's okay but if you like it please share it may be useful for others as well it is going to support me as well so that is uh, that would be your uh, favor to me all right so thank you very much tomorrow we'll continue our discussion with the coagulation we have understood the basic mechanism of what happens in the covid-19 patient but tomorrow we'll see what are the coagulation factors that start becoming up upset with this whole thing so there is a question here would soluble ace2 receptor be on liposome so here is a good thing uh, dr alexandros vasaras if i'm correctly pronouncing his name he's present in the chat today he mentioned to me that hey why not we make soluble ace receptor in one of the chats and that can be useful and so that is actually been he is working on it and there are some other companies that are also creating ace2 enzyme that is soluble and when you inject that into our body it can connect with the virus and prevent it from connecting with the actual ace2 enzyme on the cells or reduce the connection and help us in that way so uh, dr vasaras thank you very much for your great thought and uh, there is lot of studies actually happening so guys thank you very much all the studies that are included for this topic i'm going to update the descriptions after this lecture and i would put the links there so thank you very much for your time please share this and we would see each other again tomorrow at 6 thank you bye bye